Uh, let's get into the notifications. So over here on the left, you see the notifications tab. We're gonna click that. And by default, this alarm notification is not on. So whenever you first get logged into alarm.com, you do need to go to the notifications to make sure you set this up. I did set mine up before I armed and disarmed yesterday. I was gonna test it and show you guys, but since I only have my email plugged in, I don't get you know, push notifications or anything like that right now. It will give you suggested notifications. So like for here, system was not armed by a certain time. That's typically uh, pretty handy. So you can set this up in a multitude of ways. So if you leave every morning at the same time to go to work and you would like to set up a notification just in case you forget to arm the system, um, let's say you leave at 6.30 in the morning. At 6.30, if the system hasn't been armed by then, it will send a notification to you letting you know, hey, system wasn't armed, are you sure you want to leave disarmed, or would you like to arm it? The next one is system actions to watch. This one covers a large range of different notifications, such as like AC loss, um, if the system's unable to arm for whatever reason, uh, malfunctioning devices. Um, there's a lot of different ones. I'm not going to go over every single one, but definitely check that section out. It's got a lot of important notifications in it. By default, you will get this unexpected activity turned on, as well as severe weather alerts. Those are automatic. Just to kind of show you guys how these notifications are set up, I'm going to go ahead and do this one. So we open at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. So let's say I was at home. I got to leave it. 815 so go ahead and plug in 815 and then you can select every day or just the days that you would like this notification to occur and basically if the system isn't armed by 815 every morning then it's going to send me a notification it says forgot to arm the system this up here can be changed you can name it whatever you want after you've done that you've named it and you've chosen when you would like it to go off you do have to add recipients to the notification so if I click add right here, since like I said, I only have my email here, but I can click my email and then click close. And now this email is going to get that notification at 8.15 a.m. every day if I don't arm the system in time. I'm not gonna save this because I already have an abundance of emails for this thing. So for right now, just know that if you click save, it would create this notification and you can come back and edit it at any time like alarm notification if i wanted to edit that for some reason come over here to this pencil click that and basically set this up however i wanted so this one you can actually choose any sensors or specific sensors there's time frames the alarms one is always going to be any time you can choose whether it's going to Give you a notification on audible alarms silent alarms or both now silent alarms are typically caused by duress somebody entering a duress code on your system you know, somebody's forcing you to disarm the panel and you type in that duress code you don't want your phone going off saying hey you have an alarm on your system so you can actually turn that silent off and that way it doesn't send you a notification when the system goes off in those scenarios down here it does give you a warning do not choose to send a duress panic sms or push notification to a potential duress code user so let's say like for example if my wife's a stay-at-home wife if i wanted to have her get notifications for audible alarms that would not be a terrible idea but silent alarms since she's home every day if she ha ever happens to activate that duress code i don't want her phone going off basically letting Whoever is there know that she just set off the alarm. So you can customize these in very handy ways. Again, you do have to add recipients. So I just got myself added here. Click save and it saves it there. Notifications are pretty straightforward, but there are an abundance of different notification types that you can set up. So up here in the top right, see the new notifications button click on that and there are dozens of different notification types that you can set up and all of these are editable um, and have their own like custom setup for them so go through those see if there's any you'd like basically set the system up or set alarm.com up how you would like it to work for you up here at the top 
under the notifications in the black area, there's two different tabs. There's notifications and then there's push devices. Right now I don't have any push devices because I don't have a phone hooked up. So now I'm gonna hop over to my phone and get logged in so I can show you guys phone notification setup. All right, so now that we are on my phone, uh, when you first get logged in, it's gonna ask you a bunch of questions. Um, basically, uh, just getting you set up and just walk through that. Um, it'll tell you what you need to do, but one of those steps is adding your mobile device as a uh, device on alarm.com. So um, that basically allows the app to start sending those push notifications to your phone. So um, if you wanna check that though, um, as you can see, I'm just here on the main home screen, but if we go down to the bottom right and click more, um, one other thing, if yours does not look exactly like this, uh, I'm on an Android, so if you have like an iPhone or a different type of phone, it might look a little, little different, but all of the same menu options should be here. Um, it might just be moved around a bit. So anyway, um, going into uh, manage devices here, we're going to see the devices that are attached to the system. So it's going to show uh, not only my phone, but it's going to show the sensors that are on our test system in there, which I just have the one. I also have the IQ Wi-Fi 6 connected, so it shows that down there as well. Um, but just be sure up here under mobile devices that it shows it your phone. So I named mine Hayden's phone. Pretty straightforward. Uh, if you click the three dots there, you can come over to device settings. Uh, you can change the name, you can enable or disable location sharing, and enable or disable notifications. So that is how you can tell if your device is set up properly. Um, so now what we can do is go back to the main menu essentially, and then go to notifications. So whenever you get into this section, it's going to be very similar to what we were doing before on the PC side. So when you first get into the notifications page, you'll see um, whether or not push notifications are enabled for this device. So since I'm logged in through my phone on my alarm.com account, um, I can enable or disable these push notifications. And you can see that right now it's showing the current notifications that I have active. So that is just alarm one. I haven't really gone into setup anymore, but if you need to, uh, you can come up here to the top right and click the little gear, or you can click manage all recipients. So as you can see, there's a couple notifications here. Um, essentially the ones that I paused were the original alarm setup and system actions to watch. And the reason I did that, uh, the system actions to watch just because it's a test system i don't need to know everything that's going on and the regular alarm the pre-made one is not as customizable as one that you create so most people won't have to really customize it you'll probably just want it on all the time but you can create a brand new notification that is about alarms and set it up a little bit more in depth but if you need to set up new notifications, uh, the, the suggestion ones are down here at the bottom, just like they were on the PC. And then uh, there is also one that was set up for a back door, but I've removed that back door since, so it's giving me a little uh, exclamation point there. So if we just want to add a new one, just click that circle with a plus, and that will open up the new notification template. So what you can do is you can either create your own from scratch by choosing the main event that is going to trigger the notification, or you can use a template. So um, some of these template ones are a little bit specific, but you can, like I said, change the name, do whatever you want with it. Um, so just for exam an example, we'll choose the cabinet with the video game console is opened. So if you have a uh, cabinet where you store things and you have a sensor on it, you can set this up so that you tell it which sensor is actually doing that. So right now you can see uh, under notify when any of these sensors are open, it shows front door. That's the only one I have connected. But if you had a sensor on a cabinet or a lockbox or something along those lines, um, you could select that just by toggling it on. When you click it, it gives the check mark. If you click it again, it takes it away. Uh, you set the time frame, so at all times, only during certain times. And then uh, under notification filtering, you can set how often you get this notification. So 
after the last notification sent, pause notifications for the following amount of time. So you can enable that, and that way you can set how long it's going to be between notifications that get sent to you. So, or if you want to know every time that it's opened, just uncheck mark that, and it will notify you any time that sensor is open. You can also uh, choose do not send notifications when any devices are the following. So if you are using the geo services, which uses the location on your phone, you can set up set it up so that whenever you are inside that geo location, it won't send you that notification because you're going to be home. So you probably don't need it active. Essentially, you just choose the device that is going to be inside or outside of the geo fence, and then you select the fence that you want to use. So there's a couple of them there. If you have multiple, you know, locations uh, set up for geo fencing, you can choose different ones, um, so on and so forth. But uh, from there. Down here at the bottom is recipients, and just like before, you do have to manually add every recipient that you want to add. So first option is push devices there, and that's gonna be for this device, my phone. <laughs> Turn that on, uh, set up for email as well. And then if you want to receive texts, you choose the SMS option there at the bottom. So another part of the uh, login in process with your phone, it's gonna ask you uh, what carrier you have and what your phone number is and stuff so that you can plug all that in so that they can actually send you notifications. If you need to add new contacts, you can click up here, click add new, type in the name, you can do a mobile number, email address. Um, you can also, if you go to our other video about creating users, uh, you can set up new logins for others so that they can log in with their phone and receive push notifications instead of a text or an email. So I'm not actually gonna add this just because I don't need it on here, but essentially if you click save there, it will just add it as a new notification under this list and show it as active. So now once you have your active notifications, if you do need to disable them for any period of time or whatever, you can come in here, click on the notification itself, and then right here at the top right, you'll see notification active and a little slider bar. So anytime it's black like that or to the left, it is off. Whenever it is blue and the little slider is to the right, it is active. So that's really it for notifications. Um, I can't tell you which ones to set up for you because your situation is going to be very different from anybody else's that has to do this. So just go through, play with the notifications, see which ones you like, um, add the ones that you want, and set up the times for when they're going to be active if you don't want them active at all times. So... Um, but that's going to do it for this video. Uh, that should be everything you need to know about alarm.com notifications. So that is where I'm going to call it. And I will catch you guys on the next one.